as a reminder, make sure to silence your cell phones and put them on vibrate. Obviously, no live video streaming of today's press conference and no flash photography. As a reminder, we're going to open it up with an opening statement from Coach and then have questions to the student athletes only before we dismiss them. Um, so once they get settled, we'll get started. Coach, if you could give an opening statement. I mean, yeah, congratulations to LSU and, you know, just such a tough basketball game. I mean, if you if you like defense, effort, scrappy intensity, it was a great game. If you like three-point shooting, a kind of a, not a very entertaining game. Um, is that one for 27? Is that right, total? So, uh, but um, I am uh, – you know, we were we kept fighting and and we never quit and we never pouted and things were not going our way. We knew it wasn't going to be easy, but that was you know really difficult to have the the plays. And I'm I'm so proud of my team. I mean, we were executing exactly what we wanted to do. It was hard to do. They were screening for each other. They were being great teammates to each other. Great teammates to each other. Setting screens, setting up backdoor cuts, getting um, you know defensively the rebounding effort. I mean, Angel Reese not having a field goal for I don't know how long was remarkable, right? So we did everything that we were supposed to do, and um, but you know, and there was one really frustrating part of the game was that the little round thing didn't go in the big round thing for Miami, and that's a tough time for that to happen. Um, I got to credit LSU's defense. I know we were exhausted because we were pouring our heart and soul into the defensive end and the rebounding effort. So on the offensive end, unfortunately, you get a little bit of a, like a, oh, my God, okay, I can rest a little. And I think that kind of got us a little bit, and that's all the credit to LSU for being so hard to guard inside and for taking our legs out so much and for all of our intensity and all of our focus and all of our effort to be on the defensive end, which was a phenomenal defensive performance and a great, well-executed game plan, um, to have all those things going your way. But, you know, then, you know, um, just to not have that final punch on the offensive end, the final punch, and Jazz did everything in her world to keep us in it, and Destiny took every shot I wanted her to. And she's sitting up here because she's an admirable, honorable, incredible person. I know she probably doesn't want to be sitting here right now. But she is a proud, and she should be proud, and her shoulders should be back, and her chin should be up because she carried this program. And she carried it with her attitude, with her effort, with her toughness, and her loyalty. And so I want her up here because I'm celebrating you, Destiny Harden, because you have changed this program, and we are never looking back thanks to you. Again, questions only for student-athletes at this point, right here in the middle. Emily Adams, USA Today Network. Um, for either of you guys, it seems like Coach Mulkey spent a couple seconds like talking to each of you in the handshake line. Just what was her message to you guys at the end of the game there? Um, she just basically uh, was just telling us that, you know, we played good, one of the toughest teams we played. Um, she's telling me that she loved my game. She loved that I played hard. And um, that's basically what she was saying. You want, you want me to answer? Yeah, go ahead, oh. please. <laughs> she told me that um, I had a great game and, like, you know, we brought the team somewhere that it's never been, you know, we've never been here before. So she just basically told us keep our head up and, yeah. Right here on the right. Yeah, Mitchell Northern, Miami Herald. Um, Jasmine, you had another, you know, 20-plus point in game today. Um, again, you know, on a big stage in the NCAA tournament. What's been working for you and what specifically worked for you today? Um, I would say just getting to the basket. Uh, that's that's my game, getting to the basket. Also, my pull-up jumper. And my teammates just, you know, they feed me a lot of confidence, and we all feed off of each other. So I'm just taking what the defense is giving me, and, like, that's what's been working. Pete? Pete Yacobelli, Associated Press. Destiny, I, I know it's difficult now, but how soon do you think you'll be able to concentrate on what Coach Meyer said, what Coach Mulkey said, and think, yeah, you know, I did help take this team places it hadn't been before? Um, right now, I mean, it hurt because we, I mean, we competed. Uh, we gave it all. We took the program somewhere it's never been. But um, I think I'm going to just go back and in the past and uh, remember this forever, you know. So 
right now is things, but I'm I'm glad I'm able to say that we was one of the first teams to you know make history for Miami, and um, I mean I'm proud of the team, this team. I'm proud of how how hard we fought all season long, and um, yeah, I just I don't know. I'm just proud of the team, and I know the younger players gonna do well. Question on Zoom, Chris. Go ahead. Hey, this is Chris Heidel from Hermiton Radio in Baltimore. Sorry for the tough loss tonight. What does it mean this weekend for the university, both having the men's and the women's team in the in the Elite Eight and all that stuff? And what does it mean for the you know both programs uh, in the future? Um, I think it's amazing to have you know t uh, two teams in the Elite Eight. Uh, congrats to our men still making it to the Final Four, but. Um, it shows that Miami is just not uh, a, a distraction state, you know. We come here to play basketball. We come here uh, and put our priorities first. We come here to do work, and um, I think it's amazing. I think uh, we're going to continue this at Miami. Um, I know that the young classmen, like I said, they're going to be well in the future. They had great, um, you know, people ahead of them right now, you know, as far as the seniors. And, um, you know, somebody sitting next to me is going to carry the program just like I did. and. I mean, I have no doubt about that, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for what Miami got in the future. Mitchell? Yeah, Destiny, I was just going to ask you about Jasmine. It feels like she kind of put her name on the map in this tournament. I feel like I need to go back and redo my all ECC ballot. Um, what, what can you just say about, uh, about her and this program's future with her as kind of the leader? I think Miami's in good hands with Jazz, you know? Um, I think the world is just now seeing her, but uh, we've seen that all year long, all last year. Um, like I said last time, she gave up her all, and I call this girl my twin because every time she go out there, she's fearless. Uh, she want to work hard all the time. She 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 want to be coached, you know. She She's asking questions all the time now. She's starting to understand, you know. She's young, but uh, she's maturing very fast, and um, I mean, I can't be proud of her, I, and I can't wait for her future, and I know she's going to do amazing things in her future. Far right, Grace. Uh, Grace Rayner with The Athletic. Um, Coach Meyer mentioned it for either of you. Just anything you can particularly pinpoint in terms of the three-point struggles tonight and just put your finger on what might have went wrong there? Just well hitting tonight. I mean, can't, can't, can't always have a good game, you know? So, I mean, that's, that's just what it is. We just wasn't hitting tonight. Question on going there. Every shot felt good too. <laughs> Every one of them. It felt good. It did go in both ways. Really? Oh, it was crazy though. Mike, go ahead on Zoom. Hey, hey Jasmine, for you, just how difficult is it to get as close as you did to that final four, and yet tonight doesn't go the way you wanted to? Can you kind of describe the feelings of that moment and, and what that's like? It's so it really sucks. Um, <laughs> I mean, we put, we put in a lot of hard work, and we we thought we were going to win today. I mean, we competed to the end, and um, you know, it's it's a good feeling to make it this far. But like, we were just so close to you know making it to the final four, and uh, yeah, I'm very sad. But I'm gonna keep my head up, you know, keep working. Because there's other opportunities ahead, like we always got next year and the year after. So, yeah. Time for maybe one more for the student athletes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to open it up for Coach right here in the front, Mitchell. Yeah, Katie, um, it seemed like in the third quarter, that's when the game just kind of got away from y'all. What what went wrong in that in that stretch, do you think? I mean, got away from us because it was a 12 to 7 quarter. I never felt like the game got away from us. I really never felt that way. Even at the end, uh, the official was like, 48 seconds, you want to use your timeout? I was like, no, we're going to score two more times, and I'm going to need an advanced timeout to get a tie. I mean, I really never felt like the game got away. I felt like we, we missed just the – you know, really huge opportunities in big moments. But um, now, you know, uh, seven to twelve. I mean, I, if you tell, if you sit here and tell me that LSU is going to shoot thirty percent, eight percent from a three, and fifty-seven percent from a free throw line, I'm thinking I'm cutting down a net right now.
right? But that's how gritty they are, and that's how gritty we are. And 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 um, I'm so impressed with the the job that Kim's done in two years there, and revamping this roster and and having these amazing players. But uh, I think both coaches had a ton of respect for each other's as individuals. We have respect for each other, but the respect we have for the other one's team. And how much when we'd watch on film, we were like, "Ooh, I really like that how they play. I really love that they're that gritty." And and I think you know we both coach really hard and bring a lot of love. So, um, but then, I mean, we got them to play not as well as they can, and they still beat us. So you know, I got to tip my hat to them. Follow up, Mitchell. I was just going to ask about the defense. I mean, LSU. <laughs> that's a it's a season low scoring total for yeah. them. A season low for Angel Reese. I mean, yeah. how impressed were you with the execution on that end? It was incredible with a day, you know, a day, because literally we, we, we weren't preparing for anyone else besides Villanova. And um, Fitzroy Anthony, my associate head coach, had LSU, and Shanice Johnson had Utah, and we obviously didn't know which one we were going to play. And um, that, that defensive game plan, you know, we, there was a lot of it from, you know, they've, a lot of people have tried to play that way. They've played them that way. But, you know, Alexis Morris is the reason that um, they're out there and I'm sitting here right now. It's, it, it was Morris. Um, the, the, the job we did on Deja Williams and Angel Reese, I'm sorry, I think three for 15, even though she got another double-double, that's just an incredible performance. We did it last year at South Carolina with Aaliyah, too. I mean, we have that in our DNA. But the problem was it took so much out of us that we then just couldn't get that lift on the offensive end. And um, I'm sure that wasn't, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate because, you know, the people that were playing their guts out, Destiny and, and, and Jazz and Lola, were the ones we were trying to go to on the offensive end, and we needed somebody else to step up and take some of the pressure off of us. Left here, ESPN. Yeah, Coach Meyer, first of all, congratulations. Oh, um, it's thank been you. an amazing season, and those of us who've watched you for many years know how much <laughs> you deserve this. That's so sweet. Thank um, you. I wanted to ask, not necessarily, it's not a, an officiating question so much, but just the foul line, the fact that they were able to get to the line so much. I think they yeah. went 26 times. Right. And in a game where points were at a premium because <laughs> ne neither team was shooting well, how, no. how difficult was it to, to deal with that? Yeah, it, it wasn't difficult. You know what, I, I didn't, I wasn't, uh, it didn't feel unwarranted, though. I think, um, you know, we started the game, we were boxing out. We, we protected the rim. We protected the paint. As it wore on a little bit, they just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. But um, we needed to – we didn't have a free throw at halftime. And, it, you know, some coaches would blame the officials, but I'm blaming myself and my team. I said, how about we get to the free throw line, Miami, in the very first play we got to the line. I mean, that's the kind of adjustments we needed to make. Um, we did have those flare threes from my two special players that have been carrying us this whole tournament. The same way, the same reason we're here were those shots. Um, but maybe we dipped our hand in the cookie jar too many times and didn't, didn't rack it and go to the rim. But... Um, if you're standing out there, uh, they got some length, right? And they did a nice job, and they blocked some shots, and they protected the rim, and they might have gotten our head a little bit too. I got to give credit to them for that. I, I, I really do. They earned it. Question on Zoom. Mike, go ahead. I'm Mike Reese with AP Radio. Coach, in general, were you good with the shots that were taken from three, despite the fact that you have a night where none yeah, of them Yeah, we only at the end. In the fourth quarter there, um, I, I thought we had the matchup where I thought uh, a couple times we could have – what we say racked it um and i think we just you know eight point game i think eight point game i think we've had three possessions let's say dwyer doesn't go down uh, this might be a different story um no excuses there but that was the most amazing i i still can't believe what i saw on that play when she got that steal did she get the ball above angel reese i think that happened i'm not sure that was amazing, um, and uh, she just, you know, her two fouls. In the Shay was a big part of our game plan. She really was, and she got two early fouls, and then her, and then we were coming back. We were feeling back. We looked like Miami. Zaria Spearman had an incredible game, great performance. We had the lineups we liked, and, and I think that really killed our momentum quite a bit because Shay could have gotten us downhill and gotten us a little bit, and she was fresh because she had been on the bench with her foul trouble. So I think that – the game really changed there in terms of was there another magic moment for Miami? Um, that might have been it. That might have been the reason. Final two questions, starting with Pete right here. Pete Yacobelli, uh, mm -hmm. Associated Press. Katie, when the shots don't go down early, I, I know probably every coach in this game would say, all right, well, they're right. going to fall eventually. Yeah. <laughs> did, did frustration at all, could you sense any frustration among your players in the offensive side as they kept taking shots? Well, I mean, 
the the players we could get open for the three um, because of their size and because of their matchups, you know, and I'm not trying to give away a game plan for, you know, but at LSU there's a way to get some of those kids open depending on who's guarding them, and I thought we did a fantastic job of it. Um, there wasn't a lot of other options because of, uh, I think Lola, we probably could have gone inside a little bit more early, and then when Spearman showed up late in the game, um, I think that's the flash, signs of the flash of what, uh, flashes of what's coming with her. I think she's a, she's a pro. Right. Um, but um, we ask too much of Jazz Roberts and we ask a lot out of Destiny. And when you see them killing themselves on the defensive end when they have given up five or six inches on, on the matchups, I don't know how, what more can you ask. I mean, you can't blame them, but we needed somebody else to step up and hit a couple shots for us. Final question to Mitchell. Yeah, Coach, I, I know this loss stings right now, but I was just yeah. kind of looking at your roster. I think with Destiny as the outlier, five yeah. of your top six scores have eligibility left if they want that extra right. COVID year. How excited are you about kind of building off of this? Yeah, I, you know, if, right now um, I'm going to deal with my current roster, and you know how the things have changed so much that who knows what, like, like you said, I mean, as a coach, you don't know, right? Um, but I do think that what we've done in this run is shown um, what Miami basketball is all about, okay? Uh, I think we've shown absolutely raw emotion. Uh, no one steals our joy, never can, never will. You're always going to see a, a joyful, intense um, team. And um, I think we're attractive. And I think if people have an option to come back, they probably will because they've had just a great time and because we take care of our players so well. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I'm going to stay with this team right now, but I'm certainly not going to worry about the future. I think it looks pretty darn good. Congratulations on a historic season. Thank you. I am, I am, I am. And uh, that was so hard to have that game going on and not knowing, and then I guess it was on the screen, and I was, like, mad at my players. They're like, um, <laughs> the men. I was like, well, focus! And I was like, did they win? <laughs> so I did it, too. I'm really happy for them. I'm really happy for them. They've been punching and punching and punching, and they broke through, and you know what? That might be us, too. First class, thank you.